Hi, this is Chris Legospi, and welcome back. In part two of this daily life drawing exercise, we're going to continue the daily life drawing session number 20 from the New Masters Academy. And this set of drawings will be done with ballpoint pen on toned paper. Okay, we're going to continue with the daily life drawing session number 20. And these will be the five minutes, starting the five minute poses. So if you missed part one, make sure to check that out. Those are the ones and twos. And you make sure to check out part one to see that. And also you can see the uh, the materials I'll be using here. I break it down, but it's pretty much just ordinary ballpoint pen. And this is my Strathmore tone paper sketchbook. This is my personal sketchbook. My favorite thing to draw on. So here I'm starting with a five and um started with the envelope because it's a reclining pose it seems to work pretty well for reclining poses yeah i pretty much need to know how much space it takes up so that's kind of why the envelope is for it helps me with placement in a lot of ways it's good training for painting yeah in a lot of ways this entire exercise life drawing in general is really training for painting it teaches you how to make good decisions. Well, it teaches you how to see correctly, number one. Number two, it teaches you, um, you know, about the figure, about anatomy and stuff. Um, you can learn a lot about that, seeing various figures and various models and various poses. And number two, it teaches you prioritization. It teaches you what to emphasize, what to de-emphasize, what to work on in the limited time you have. And... And of course, you can also learn placement. So here I finished with the block in. So this was a back pose, not too much anatomy, no face, only one hand. And now I'm starting to drop in the shadow. So actually fives are my favorite time for life drawing because it gives you just enough time to drop in the shadow, the shading, to begin the shading. And you know, that that's... That's that's a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun, especially um, with this hatching kind of kind of tool. I I, I just love hatching. Um, yeah, it's something that um, I'll probably be doing my entire life. You know, some artists like the uh, the tonal approach using big blocks of charcoal and things. But man, I just love the the hatching. I love the motion, and it looks cool. It just looks cool. So here I dropped the little bit of shadow shape I got on the back there, and this is the cast shadow. This is beautiful, beautiful pose, beautiful photography. I'm really, really impressed with the new, the new Masters Academy. So you definitely should check them out. If uh, they're the best, the ref they're the best art company. Period. But my God, their reference is incredible, and they just keep they they keep making them. Man, it, it seems like every week, every month, they add to their library of reference. So it's a wonderful, wonderful resource. And these are time. So I'm actually watching the YouTube video. They're, I'm watching this off their YouTube channel. These are being timed. So it's a great, great resource for artists. Um, you know, I, I would personally prefer to draw from life, of course. But, you know, not everyone has that luxury, uh, you know. So this is a wonderful resource for that. Okay, so here I'm, what am I doing here? Mm, oh, I'm softening the core shadow. It's just softening, helping it turn, helping it roll, roll, transition. You know, basically these forms are big old cylinders. So you, you got to roll it like a, like a cylinder, like a rolling pin is a big cylinder. Roll the sh from shadow to light. Make that, that form turn, roll, become cylindrical, become 3D. That's what I'm doing here. And again, using my hatching technique. So I'm going to use a little bit of a lighter touch. And that's a beautiful thing about pen is actually very close to, in effect, very close to charcoal in a lot of ways because you can get very light. You can get pretty dark and you can build up your dark. So a ballpoint pen in a lot of ways simulates charcoal. And I just love it because... Um, it's friggin' immediate. You can't erase it. Uh, I, I love things you, you can't undo for some reason. 
So here, um, able to use the Carbothello finally. Had finally had some time. Uh, I I freaking love it. this. Is pretty much why I I use tone paper so I can do this. The Carbothello, add in that white. And I've tried many pencils. Carbothello is the best. I believe I got this idea from uh, either Steve Houston or Charles Hugh. The Carbothello, probably Steve Houston. I think. Okay. This is the second five minute pose here, starting with the head and um, starting with the uh, the arms. So the arms are kind of wrapped around the head there. Now I'm transitioning down to the torso. So like I mentioned earlier in, in the first video, um, I haven't done life drawing in a while. Oh, well, I haven't drawn figure quick sketch in a while. Let's, let's just say that, at least not like this. Normally, um, when I go to quick sketch sessions, now I almost exclusively do it in watercolor because uh, I just like painting so much. But uh, this is great. Uh, this is a great chance, and uh, I hope you get some value out of watching uh, watching me uh, uh, do this. Uh, I have thousands and thousands of hours uh, doing this. So, um, yeah, I'm, I could probably do it in my sleep if I had to <laughs> probably do it with my eyes closed but uh, it's it's a wonderful training tool and you know I wouldn't have gotten to where I am today if it wasn't for those thousands of hours of life drawing including my commercial art career um, I believe that uh, the life drawing helped me become a concept artist so I always tell my 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 entertainment students that So what am I doing here? So I'm kind of fleshing out the forms. Now I'm dropping in the anatomy, putting in some of the rhythms there. And notice all the curves. Um, normally I would use a lot more straights, but uh, actually the night before I recorded this, I was watching John Asaro's painting lesson on the, on the New Masters. And he talked about drawing for like two hours. It's like a six-hour lesson. The first two hours are about drawing. It's incredible. And he really, really emphasizes curves, curves and gestures. So I'm kind of drawing with John Asaro's voice in my head. So maybe that's why these drawings just seem a little off. You know, looking back, these drawings are quite, they're quite terrible. My, they're quite mediocrely meh. They're quite meh. Um, but... Uh, uh, you know, it's good. I I'm kind of glad I did this because it gave me a chance to uh, think about what John Asaro said and apply it. Um, you know, when I to, uh, take workshops, painting, drawing workshops, I would go practice right away. I remember I took a Steve Houston workshop a few years ago in L.A. He came to L.A. and it's the first time I met him. Uh, I took a workshop. The workshop ended at 5 um, and I went to a coffee shop and started drawing right away. And then um, I was drawing. I, I spent the, you know at least three or four hours uh, uh, trying to apply what he taught immediately because I didn't want to forget. So this is good practice, I guess. I was able to apply what I learned from a sorrow. And here I'm dropping in the core shadow, putting in a little bit of edge, a little bit of that firm edge. I love about pen. I love pen because you can get a lot of edge variety if your touch is light. And this is a fairly light touch, and this pen is a fairly wet. This is one of those Bics, ordinary Bic. It's very, very wet, so you can you can get a lot of ink down there real quickly. And I probably won't have time. Oh, yeah, I do have a little bit of time to fill in the tone. I think my time is running out on this one. Could be wrong though. I believe this is a five. And what am I doing here? Yeah, just dropping in the tone, massing in the tone. So um, once your figure is constructed or laid in, you want to separate light and shadow. And this is the beginning of that. First, you design the shadow shape, you draw the shadow shape that you see, and then mass in the tone so that you can separate it from the light. Okay, so now I'm back to the Carbothello. 
That's my favorite little thing. That's my buddy. And here I'm going to um, just drop in the highlights that I see. And I'm basically treating it uh, like a big cylinder. The limbs for sure are a big cylinder. The forms in the torso, the breasts are spheres. So I'm thinking geometry when I do these highlights. Okay, so I believe this is, um, I believe this is a 10. Yes, so this is the 10 minutes. So I'll definitely have some time to shade here. And I'm starting with the envelope. So this is a reclining pose, and the envelope just helps me with placement. And um, right away, I know I'm having trouble with the edge of the sketchbook. So there's that thing, I'm sure we've all experienced this, where if you draw, if your drawing is close to the edge of your paper or your sketchbook like, like this is, you, you force it small. And that's what I'm doing. Because psychologically, you don't want your drawing to run off the paper. Your mind is like, eh, help me, oh, please, please save me. It's almost like your drawing is going to fall off the edge of a cliff. So, so you, you basically make your drawing shorter and crappier. Uh, so that's what I'm, I'm struggling with the placement here. And, you know, of course, because I have a pen. I have a pen. I know that um, uh, I, I have to live with the marks on <laughs> me. Uh, which is good and bad. It's good because it teaches you commitment. It's bad because you can't erase. Um, but that's also a good thing too, in my opinion, because, uh, um, you know, now this drawing is stuck in my sketchbook. I have to live with these marks. I, so every time I open to this page, I'll be reminded of the painful mistake. Like, oh, why did I do that? So, um, you know, you tend to make fewer mistakes when you live with the consequences. And that's that's really what I love about drawing with pen is that you have to live with the consequences. My God. It's painful. Painful but good. And, you know, these are little tiny figure drawings. It's nothing serious. No one's going to get hurt doing these. Um, it's, it's no big deal. Just Just personal study here. Okay, so I got the nice block in, the general block in. So now I'm able to add some nuances, subtleties to the contour, basically bumps. So one of the things that separates experienced drawing from beginner drawing is that beginners draw the bumps in the details right away. Uh, experts uh, prioritize. We leave those details out until they're necessary until you have time, until you need them, because you might not put them in at all, you know. You definitely, editing is a big part of the game. And again, that's one of the benefits of daily life drawing is you learn how to edit, prioritize, um, you know, when it's timed. And that's the beautiful thing about this new master's uh, daily life drawing is that they're timed. So uh, I'm staring at the, they have a little a countdown clock on the left of the YouTube page. On the on the video there, it's it's very it's one it's wonderful to see the your time you have left. So so now I know I have to commit. I know I have to like prioritize. And right now the priority is the shadow shape. I have to get that right and also get the proportion right because uh, this yeah I'm not I'm not really sure it feels this, yeah I was just gonna say normally when I draw I turn my damn paper <laughs> so here I had to. Uh, you know, I'm recording this video, and uh, that was the first time I picked up the sketchbook. But yeah, I do that uh, all the time. Turn, rotate, uh, even get a mirror for the longer drawings. That's one of the cool things that Sorrow talked about in his painting uh, lesson on the, the New Master site is uh, he, how often he uses a mirror, and he's constantly stepping back. So that's that's why I had to turn the paper out. Because I know that there's some errors here. It doesn't quite feel right. Um, so turning it will help. Um, a mirror will help, but I can't do that, obviously, on a, on a timed life drawing. and um, That would look weird on a video, for sure. So here I'm designing the shadow shape. And, you know, um, I have a bad feeling about that arm. Just from experience, knowing once you get to the edge, your mind will screw up your drawing. 
Um, that's okay. You know, you I'll learn. Next time I won't make it so damn big. That's really the the lesson here. Or maybe I'll just isolate the torso. Okay, so here's the cast shadow. It's a wonderful cast shadow shape. And I just love the photography they do there. It's, it's a beautiful and appropriate for artists. So here I'm dropping in the tone. And I had to zoom in a little bit. The camera I'm using um, is a DSLR. And uh, the, the, the sensor gets hot. So I had to shut off the video, restart it. I know it's a little bit of cheating, but I, I promise I didn't add any time. So that's what that cut was. And here I'm just dropping in the tone. So this will be a 10 minute. I have plenty of time to do some shading. Relatively plenty of time. And uh, right now this form is feeling good. So I'm not 100% happy with the, the drawing itself, the construction, especially the the parts that are near the edge of the, edge of the paper. Who knows if that's right? Most likely it's not, I don't know. Looks okay, but now this tone looks great. I love the tone. I love the hatching. I love the hatching. And notice the hatching is slightly curved, so it kind of goes along with the form of the cylinder. So I'm treating the whole thing like a cylinder. All right, here I'm adding some dark accents and I'm punching in the the cast shadow to give it some edge variety, softening some edges. So that's really what will happen between now and let's say the next three hours. I'll make some edges harder. I'll make some edges softer. I'll add some halftone, I'll erase some halftone, add some dark accents, add some light accents, you know what I mean? So that's really the rendering. It's just long, slow um, refinement, build up, refinement, build up, tear down. That's all it really is. But none of it would be possible without a good block in. So if you think of refinement or rendering, my favorite analogy is, is the sports car. So if you think about rendering as a spoiler and rims, right? And if, if you got a car and you want to put on a fancy, fancy like gold rims or spinning rims or whatever, like, like the kind you see in rap videos and things, then if you want like a cool spoiler or some cool paint job, um, you know, that's great. But if you put all that fancy stuff, uh, rims and a spoiler, on a crappy car, uh, you know, it's still a crappy car. But... If uh, your car or your lay-in or your base drawing is like a Lamborghini or a Ferrari or a, or a Tesla Roadster, right, something badass, um, you know, then the, the, the rendering will take care of itself in a lot of ways. The polish really doesn't matter. So anyway, that's just a quick analogy. What it means is um, rendering is nothing without great drawing, great lay-ins. Great construction, great proportion, good good understanding of anatomy. All right, so here I'm adding my white Carbothello. Oh, it's my favorite, my favorite. This is my favorite uh, thing in the world, pen, tone paper, <laughs> and white Carbothello. I'd probably do this, uh, well, I know I do it every day, but man, it never gets old. It's my favorite sketching thing. Look at how cool that looks. I like how that's looking. It's looking kind of cool with the white there. And I, I can smudge because it's pastel and it's dry. It sits on the surface so I can smudge it with my finger. I can refine it quite a bit. Here I go. Just smudging, softening the white. It's not the greatest highlight job. But look at that cool, super bright highlight. And I'm trying to control my values a little bit here. You know, you never want... Um, all your highlights to be the same. Some highlights will be brighter. In fact, um, you want to choose one to be the brightest dominant highlight. In that case, that was on the breast there. So I got to control my values a little bit. Here I am um, adding the occlusion shadow. So that little contour edge of the figure where it meets the ground or the surface, that's called the occlusion shadow. So I'm punching in a dark accent there and it's separating the figure from the cast shadow, whereas previously it just kind of melded together, which is a nice look too. And I'm pretty much running out of time here. But this is probably as far as I can go in 10 minutes anyway. You know, just continue to refine, but to me the shapes are good. The, the lay-in is 
pretty good. The gesture is is really good. It's really solid. So I'm happy here. I think this was as a 10 minute study. This was a success. So I'm going to wrap up this little drawing here and this will uh, complete um, today's daily life drawing session using a ballpoint pen. Okay, that's the end of this daily life drawing session. Uh, I want to thank you for watching. Yeah, if you like this video and if you like my work, head on over to my website and sign up for my free newsletter. Newsletter subscribers will get access to the uh, subscriber page and there you'll see some, some wonderful free and exclusive content. There's a lot of figure drawing content there as well. And you can also get some handouts. It's all for free. So just go to www.freshdesigner.com and enter your email and you'll be good to go. And of course, um, if you want to try this for yourself, definitely head on over to New Masters Academy. Um, you can check out uh, their free content on their YouTube page. It's wonderful free content. That's where I was watching this daily life drawing. Uh, also, uh, excellent, excellent um, uh, instructional content on their main site as well. So definitely check them out at New, newmastersacademy.com. And if you like this video and um, if you want to see more, uh, please leave a comment below. Let me know what mediums you want to see next. If you want to see charcoal, you want to see uh, a charcoal pencil, if you want to see watercolor, if you want to see more pen, uh, graphite, um, wh whatever you want to see me uh, draw in, whatever you want to see me demonstrate, whatever you want to see me talk about, I would love to do more of these. This was a lot of fun to do. So leave a comment below. Let me know um, what material I should use next for the next daily life drawing session. So that's it for today. And until next time, get out there, keep drawing, and build up that mileage. Bye for now.